Radiant's turn to pick. Night Stalker. Welcome back for the concluding game of Fnatic vs Clutch Gamers. This is the ESL1 Hamburg C qualifier, our first semi-final for today. And of course, this is the anime duo. My name is Hades, and with me, my fellow anime loving cast co-caster PQMZ. Hello. Hello. Watched any nice anime during the break? Uh, I mean, I watched Fnatic lose. That's some good anime right there. Oh, not like this. Five seconds remaining. Hey. You just set yourself up for burns, dude. You need to Here's work on that. I think it's a bad habit. I'm not sure why. I think I think it's just how I I you know how I am. I mean, Mali yeah, does the same nice guy to me. syndrome, you know. Nice guy syndrome, but I I didn't finish last. Or maybe your girlfriend wishes you did. Uh, did I just set myself up for that? Oh my god. <laughs> yes, you did. I had... Five seconds remaining. Oh my god. Not like this. I, I didn't... Oh, uh, there. Okay. Uh, it, I, I'm I done. I know you wanted a Reddit thread. Not for that, but... Okay. I'm not... Oh no. Not... not oh. I'm actually speechless, guys. Guys, help! <laughs> this this bullying is not a thing on the stream. We we do not do that here. Uh, okay, so, so talk about Dota. Let's talk about Let's Dota. Let's talk about Dota. Of, uh, finishing, not last. All right, all right, all right. There we go. Con getting back into the game, guys. Well, a quick recap. Game one was taken by Fnatic. You know they were behind, but Alchemist Alchemist things came back online. Out farmed, got crazy. 962 GPM at the end of the game. Excalibur had a great game that one. Game two. Kind of different. I feel it's almost like a curse. Like, whichever team picks SF, they're going to lose. Feels that way. So, you know, Fnatic this time, they're going to open up with the Visage mid, I think. It should be a Visage and maybe perhaps the Ohio Venomancer. I mean, so far, like, even Ohio's been getting these heroes which are far greedier. But, it, like I said, Eternal Envy also gets heroes which doesn't farm as much. Like, you saw the Enchantress. He's okay with solo lane matchups. It's, it, it's almost as if he's like, seconds. guys... I'm going to pick this hero for myself so I can solo this lane. I want you guys to win the other lane. Pretty much like that all the time. So you see, this time they take so you're a... you're saying he's asking his team to carry him? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think it's a very important thing that right now you can allow your carry to do that though. Uh, I think it is a winning formula. Oh, They're just going to have to... Back it up with some kind of way to win a team fight. Because last game, if the game gets past 30, 35 minutes and they're not snowballing with Asius, how do they actually breach high ground? How do they win a team fight to win the game? It is extremely hard to win the game for uh, just purely through pushing lanes and hitting buildings. Their game plan is it only works with certain heroes, and they didn't have those heroes. But this game, they already have a lot more team fight just through like generic damage. Ten and seconds. so far, I'm liking their draft a lot more. They have two heroes that are really flexible. Five Visage can literally remain. play any role in the game. Venno can play any core. You can see him as a support, but it's died off for a reason. You know, the jungle is no longer the best place to put him. Clutch Huskar? So him. Weaver. Oh, Weaver. Okay, um, I was about to say that they I have foresee. Yeah, like. Uh, I was about to say, I foresee a draw pick this game. Look at Fnatic's draft. Veno, Visage, AA. All they need now is like a Shadow Shaman and a Draw Ranger, and they have the ultimate push strat. Well, Clutch Gamers, you know, the, having the Oracle, Seconds. they can always use it with an Alchemist, they can use it with a Terrorblade, they can use it with a ton of heroes. Huskar is one which comes to mind. I mean, Huskar Oracle is no surprise to Filipino fans around the world. I mean, you guys have seen TNC play it, have you seen Mineski play it, any Filipino team, or even Dyer, any team in general, when given the chance, they will pull out the occasional Oracle Huskar. But okay, Fnatic, they go back for the Sand King, they realize, okay, we need a bit of lockdown. Yeah, they definitely need as a stunt. Yeah, so this... And it's... It's still slightly open-ended. You, you don't know if it's a core Visage, a core Sand King. 
Weaver's pretty good at dealing Ten with seconds. an offlane Sand King. I feel like this should be so, a 4 Sand King though. Like I've seen DJ play the 4 Sand King before. And this should be a Palaida Ancient Apparition. So far, any Visage which has been played by this Fnatic roster is usually with Excalibur taking it down mid. And a higher I have Venom. seen DJ play it before if I'm correct, right? I think so, maybe. A long time ago, not with this team. But yeah, there was he a long time ago. Yeah, he can. But, that, but that's DJ in general, in a nutshell, right? He can play any hero. Yeah, I think... I can't remember which team he was playing with, but I think it was when he was playing with mid one. He was like one of the best fours in the world. It was really sad to not see him, you know, get to the same level that people like Jerax got. Because I feel like he had the potential. He did. I mean, he's... Maybe he still does. He still the past few games, he's played really well. Uh, not knocking him at all. He is really talented. Like, if if anything, like, Good I wanted player. to say that... Like, I, there was a he's... story once. Like, I, I remember Ninja Boogie telling me once that... I think, was it with Rave? I can't remember, but... Oh, no, it, was, it, was not, it wasn't Ninja Boogie. It was Eric, like, uh, the manager. He told, me, he told me before saying that... There's one time, like, DJ, he went on break. And he, he just came back after, like, what, two weeks? He was like, guys pick for me Chen. There was, a, there was a brief stint where when he and Mushi, you know, that, that, that Fnatic roster, he was just playing a ton of Chen. And he never touched a hero. He, he just played a lot of pubs and he just came back and the whole team was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, guys, trust me, pick for me Chen. And yeah, that's the kind of person DJ is. He's super hardworking as well. Ninja Boogie told me as well, like when he was on rave with DJ, back then he went by the name Chrissy, said that DJ is the most diligent player he has ever Ten worked with and he's seconds. super talented as well. Like, under the guidance of J.O. and Boogie at Five Rave, he actually climbed for, like, he was like a 4k player and he made it all into like, what, 6-7k. Interesting. So... I didn't think he'd, uh... Like, climb from that from... I thought he was already up there, personally. He reminds me of Zai. Like, he plays offlane, he plays support, he plays both amazingly. You could put him in a prof professional team on both roles, you know. He's basically Zai. He is both young talents. For all the EU people that, you know, maybe don't know the roster. I doubt it, but you never know. It's hard to not know DJ. I mean, you guys have seen the mount clip. Black hole from the low ground. But, okay, I mean... Enough about DJ. Let's talk about the clutch game inside a bit more. This is a roster so far. I mean, has any of these players really stood out to you? We haven't talked about them yet. Um, to be honest, I think the entire team plays pretty well. Uh, I really like their captain. I, I think he puts his team in good positions constantly through... If it's him doing the calls, if it's not, then I like his drafts. I like how he moves around the map and how he sacrifices a lot. To be honest, like, I don't think there's a standout. It, it all depends which game. Because last Dyer's game, the Viper play. kept his farm up the entire game. Not the easiest thing to do, even though he like, did have control of the map, and the Knicks did a lot of good scouting. Died a few times, but none of them really mattered, you know? I, I think it's a very solid roster. Just with much more unknown Ten players. Seconds. And so far, I think they have a slight uh, issue with the draft. Being able to, like, actually fight into Fnatic. Turn to What's the last pick gonna be? They actually go back. Invoker. Whoa, Armel Invoker. We haven't seen an Invoker in. I like it. In a while, like it's a horrible time. against Visage in the lane, but I, I I do feel like they needed some kind of extra team fight hero, and Invoker is pretty free this game Ten except for a Sand King stun. You know, once he gets his items rolling, he's gonna have a Five pretty easy time remaining. using his stuff in fights. Just wait for it. Do have the last pick out. though. So this is probably Envy's hero. Just wait for it, dude. It's gonna be a draw. It's gonna be a draw ranger coming up. I mean, it could work. Or they could even just go for a Luna. Just something to push really quickly. But I think that I I, I see the draw. Pick. I feel like draw is better than Luna. They could also just. I I don't like the idea of one Veno here. I I feel like it's a bit much. It's probably offlane, and then... Yeah, Envy gets a solo hero, right? And they just put, like, Sand King Venno bottom, AA goes wherever, Visage goes mid. That's the vibe I'm getting right now. So what is Envy's solo hero against? Probably the Void? 
No, the clutch gamers has to void it. Yeah. Seek it. Okay, so dual lanes. Okay. They do not have good heroes to kill the illusions. So this kind of fills what Fnatic was lacking as well. Visig is okay at hitting towers, but you know he can't do minus armor on them except for like desos and shit. So his familiars don't push that well. They did have a few control issues. CK fixes some of that. He's very good at bursting heroes quickly as well before Oracle can actually get his spells off. You almost have to use them preemptively. I think it's a good CK game. I, I like the idea here. So do I. And once he gets to that somewhat decent level of farm mid game, I think he can actually tear apart these heroes like Void, Bok, on the Weaver. They have great stuns. It's actually going to be J on the safe lane and it's going to be a Bok Weaver off lane, which is what I kind of expected. Because so far on this roster, um, I I like how they they like to give Bok the chance to do more damage. If you notice, like... Okay, they, now they, they swap, now they swap around. Okay, this, this I is I actually kind of like the idea because CK can deal with Void very easily, but Weaver can put a lot of pressure in that lane. And unless you have a Sentry, you can't really kill the hero. But they probably thought, you know what, he might just buy a sentry. And then the weaver's screwed. Do we want to risk that? Possibly not. Uh, I just feel like this game, you need the weaver to be impactful. If you have an offlane weaver and it doesn't do so good, it, I don't feel so confident. Void is always going to be a chrono hero. And this game... You're probably going to be looking to Chrono like Visage Birds and CK. And that is good. And you know, let like your Invoker do the rest. You don't need a lot of farm to do that. And he should be able to get a decent amount of kills on especially the supports. Just by getting level 6 and Chronoing them with Sunstrike. Chrono with Sunstrike, and Chrono with Meteor, well. Chrono with Swarm Alacrity. Oh, that's always great to see. But we'll yeah, see if does a lot of damage as well, so mm -hmm. very easy support duo to just go around. Uh, very easy to support to have a duo with Void to go get kills everywhere, and it's not an ultimate either. So, all right. So uh, I like the smoke from Fnatic though. They have a very very easy time like getting a kill here. Breaks the smoke. All right. Power strike. Oh, it's too I short. Now the fortune send, gonna debuff Boombacks, turning back in, they go for DJ, Swarm already flew out, J.O. actually didn't go for the level on Shikuchi, and that's a lot of right click damage into Ohio, Ohio will take the bounty in, but he's probably gonna pay he's for it in his life, then one more right click, and actually two heroes going down, J.O. getting the first blood and the second kill as well. Yeah, that's another kill. Die, die, die. Yeah, maybe not. Do they have enough damage? That's the question. I don't think so, Gale comes out, Fly Solo should be dead? Yeah. Yeah, I really like the swarm. I don't think they expected that either. And they also purge like two hits away from the Sand King on Chilling Touch. Here comes Boombax, Fortune Zen, and the swarm. Are they giving the kill to Jo? No, Boombax claims to kill. So that's gonna be three zero already in the first forty seconds of the game. Wow. Yeah, suddenly not looking so good for for an exact It was a really nice idea with the smoke, but when you miss the Sand King stun like that. Uh, it, it, it kind of just, yeah, feels bad, man. It doesn't mean the lane's over by any means, but th they are going to have to play around this, you know? Dyer's bottom tower is about to fly How they play around this will be the question. I mean, AA is not exactly the best aggro tri lane hero, I feel, despite Chilling Touch being a good spell. And they need to like use him to win the lane right so you you get that kill with chilling touch you start winning the lane he gets level two him and sand king can start putting kills out on the supports now he's behind he's a ranged creep who has a very strong one minute cooldown spell pretty much he's good when he's ahead bad when he's behind so pi really unable to zone anything out on jo he's doing okay in cs you know he's five and oh Let's talk about the mid matchup. We said that Armel can't really do anything against Excalibur, this Visage versus Invoker matchup. Can you explain why? It's mostly because I expected the supports to be able to roam on the Invoker, but 
Early on, in both cooking trade, it, it's when Visage gets birds, he gets a really hard time. Like, at, at that point, you kind of concede the lane and go jungle, I think. The birds just cause you too many problems. And most of the time, Visage just rushes a medallion. You know, no boots, no second null, maybe you get a range off. But you, you rush medallion, and then you get level 6, and Invoker can't lane at that point. So, up until then, he's fine. If he can get a kill or two with maybe a uh, rotation from Nightstalker around the 4 minute mark, that will help them a lot. DJ is actually, uh, Jo is actually missing out on a ton of CS. They're controlling this creep wave so well. Three heroes, you know, Nightstalker is not in the lane anymore. He's actually going to head to straight to the bottom lane, try to pressure internal enemy, force the supports to the bot maybe, but doesn't seem like they'll have much luck with that. I mean, Bok is getting 15 to 4, just pulling it in terms of denies over Envy, but it's very, very static this lane. So hoping that the boombacks coming in, they might be able to make something happen here. Nowhere near enough yeah, damage. just pressure. Right, uh, the Night Stalker can't really fight into them top, right? The the Bounty Rune fight is completely different to how a laning fight's gonna go. So he needs to find you somewhere else on the map. And Fnatic do not have heroes that's gonna kill J.O. most of the time, unless he gets really out of position. So if they can just leech levels here and not get dove, they're accomplishing their job. You, you'd expect the Night Stalker to maybe look for a play mid, but he might be just waiting for night time for that. Maybe trying to get his level 3 bottom first. 10 more seconds, why not? And the middle lane is actually Armel pulling further and further ahead. You know, he's got 23 to 14. Excalibur is actually behind in terms of EXP and levels. Yeah, this is going to be very, very rough. Using the Grave Chill, he's just trying to get whatever harassment damage he can onto Armel. The smoke from Fnatic, they want to try and pressure this mid, they want to salvage the lane a bit. Oh, beautiful scan! Both teams did it. <laughs> yep, they know. Very rare to see both teams scan, but he's still going to get caught. Armel? Uh, question mark? Okay. But no. Can he turn around here? J.O. does come in. Can he kill Excalibur? I think not. Okay, use the Void. J.O. on a killing spree. Did he die for this? Oh. Yeah. Yes, they, they do. One more hit. Let's turn on Sand King. Dyer's top tower is about to take Ends up being run. okay for them. Um, but yeah, it, it like just feels like an unnecessary play. And they just go back to the shrine, and Jo heads back to the top lane. Very good rotation already, getting involved very early on, and he is on a killing spree. I imagine he can do the same thing when Void gets Chrono as well. If he wants to go bottom, they can make that kill happen with a Sunstrike very easily. And if he's quick enough, they can actually, he can actually even time this back up to the top lane, just for maximum efficiency, but that's a very huge if. I mean, five no, and there's one. no way. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying if, you know, somehow. But clutch game yeah, is... It's more fine. likely that he goes bottom and pushes, you know? Yeah, he has an Aquila, so... Put some pressure on the tower. CK is not a good hero early to deal with pressure. If he's not getting kills on you, he, he's not really good at dealing with, like, trading of hits. Like, he's doing okay with trading farm with the void, but the second the pressure starts coming from Chrono, I, I imagine Envy's gonna have some problems. I'll take your and I think the main way they rectify that is just by, like, putting pressure with their other heroes. Like, this is just hit 6, so this is his time to Now they use the Chrono, Sunstrike coming in as well, they have the void. Envy should be dead. Very quick kill, and he just got level 6. Good usage of the first Chrono already, so 2 minutes without Chrono. And now they want to try and pressure the bottom half. DJ going to Sandstorm. They don't have detection. Lanes are all going really well for Clutch. This is something that... Uh, I feel like Fnatic can deal with, but... Just having this Void have such a good time is really causing them problems. I think that aggro lane just put them in such a weird position. Because now the Night Stalker moves around the map pretty freely. Void has a one on one lane, which he edges out the win in most of the time, unless you get really lucky crits with CK. Using the Phantasm, they want to try and fight here. 
Find some bulk. Time walk. Bash. Bash. Sunstrike. Oh, that's enough damage. One more hit. Eternal Envy can't sell through this. Trying to get the stun off and he's dead. So 7 to 1. The clutch gamers are looking extremely strong in this laning. I bet you Envy's saying what the hell is the Night Stalker still doing there. And he just wants to like farm the hard camp with his illusion. And he ends up dying for it. And, you know, Sand King's also in a bit of trouble. Is he though? Yes he is. J.O. dominating. Chasing after a very pesky hero which is Pylai Dai. But it's okay, they, they let him go. Just this once, you know. They'll come back for him later on. Fnatic are uh, not having anything go for them this game. The aggro lane straight up sucks at the moment. Their mid lane is slightly ahead. But Invoker's done such a good job in the early few levels and his sun strikes are making impact across the map. He can go to the jungle. If they really want, they can, you know, put the weaver here and put someone else top. Just to make sure the tower doesn't get pressured. Or you know, you sit behind the invoker. I know, I, I struggle to see Fnatic getting back into this. And their, their attempt is Envy to smoke up with the AA. This is not something you'd expect. Alright, but do they have detection? No, they do not. They put the sentry down. Okay, now we get the stun up. With the chain stuns and down goes RML. But over there at the bottom of Chrono, Bok and Boombacks, they don't have mana, but they have the double damage. DJ, gonna sandstorm, just look there, you know, sit there looking very pretty. Alright, that's a good, good, good sequence of events. Chrono gets used, they get a very important kill. They not, might not be able to take this tower, but they might as well put some pressure. Envy has Phantasm in 15. It depends how much Clutch wants to defend it. Weaver does have a TP. But what they, the fact they know there's no Chrono. Okay, so that's a game winning smoke. It puts them back quite a lot. Easy tier 1 tower as well. And they're gonna get a nice little kill here on Night Stalker. Boom back. Yep. yep, dead. Easy money. Not to mention much needed EXP. J.O., well, his participation has been kind of falling off now for a bit. We haven't seen him get too involved, like moving around like we saw back earlier on. But he's still top of the net worth, you know, he's still higher net worth than the Visage. Four kills, man. Does a lot for you. Now, now we need to see what Fnatic do with this. I, I'm not so sure where the Visage wants to move. Do you just keep farming? Because he's got his Midas in 100 gold. So you're going to wait for that. But where do you go afterwards? Right, so AA Pi just going to leech EXP, get that level 6. He should be getting in he after this creep to. wave. On next one, okay. Yeah, but does he survive to tell the tale? CS lol. Pi. It's hard, man. You have this mental pressure as a support. Hoping night time, like, but okay, right Pylidae is definitely dead. Giving the kill to Jay, who will just finish him off. Jayo farming supports. No, Excalibur's making the right move. He's gone top. He's gonna start pressuring the tower. And he's doing this on his own right now. A higher does come along. But he can probably take this trade. Oh, higher did M going for the four points up, into the plague ward. I think he needed to this game. Like, they lost their lane, so he needs to farm speed. And it's not like they lack damage in this case. This is just one hero that brings you enough damage. Alright, so he's gonna get the top tier one. Pulling further and further ahead, taking these tier one towers, opening up the map. Getting some gold into the economy as well for Clutch Gamer's side. I mean, so for the Fnatic side, and I mean, for Clutch Game as well, the Invoker, he has the Midas, he's gonna build his way into an Aglim Scepter. Dyer's top tower the Clutch Game is they are smoked attack. up, looking for some kills, they want to head into their side of the jungle, they're going there. straight to the top left, Radiant's diagonal. Tower is under attack. This is a very, very long smoke, and they're not smoking to any vision, they have a rough idea where Fnatic could be. If they end up catching the Venno, it's... it's fine. Time lock. Chrono. Just about. Do they have enough damage? Sunstrike should be a kill. So Armel getting a big kill. And he gets 
the last hit as well, so maximum efficiency for the team. Good chrono, good chrono. You know, you want to shut down these heroes as much as you can. Let me just look at this poor Oracle. Mill is chasing after DJ that's gonna burst strike. The false promise is gonna be out there onto Fly Solo himself. He's gonna try and heal himself out through this. Is it possible? Will he survive this? I think not. He's gonna go down to Excalibur. But if they consider that a trade, that's a trade Clutch will take. Because there's no pressure on other lanes right now, and they got the more important kill. And meanwhile, their invoker's just doing invoker things. Which is kind of the hero that they care the most about. You know, I, I said the Weaver's probably going to need to have a good game. He is. Being very, very active as well. To the top nice to see. He's going the normal Lincoln's build. I don't mind because Sand King and Chaos Knight are pretty good at netting kills on this hero if they just carry detection. Lincoln's makes it nigh impossible. And the Invoker can make up for the lack of damage early. Well, Night Stalker, he's just being a pain in the ass, hanging around inside the enemy jungle. They are going to start invading the Radiant jungle. Clutch Gamers have quite good map control, you know, two, one tier on tower taken at the bottom lane. They're going to try and get some siege damage onto the mid one, perhaps. JL still, he's very close to that Lincoln Spear which you, talk, which you brought up earlier on. And they're going around in Bok. They want to try and find some kills. 30 seconds to the next Chronosphere. And they see the Veno again. Can they kill him though? Deep Ward doing work. They, know, they should know Probably he's alone. Probably not they got him. Yeah, they're going to wave the Chrono, but okay, I hear a Phantasm, and it's on our Envy going to push up the bottom lane. Yeah, you basically consider this like a Midas. It's nice to fight with it, but... Yeah. Uh, I like that he's using it effectively on cooldown, every cooldown, to try and get some extra farm. He is going to... just feed away a bit to the Weaver here, though, so... Only gets, like, two creeps for it. Better than none, and well, Ohio is pushing out the middle lane. They are not that far behind now, if you think about it, because they are starting to gain some traction. Invoker is just push, pushing out waves, you know, farming, doing Invoker things. He's still going to be not there for another at least five to ten minutes. Most important thing for Fnatic is uh, DJ's managed to farm a blink, despite having zero luck in his uh, aggressive lane. A 15 minute blink is pretty good. And now they have their initiation tool, so... We can see how they go from here. Because they have a lot of follower. If the birds just play with Sand King, he can get solo kills with Epi. You know, AA, same thing. Lots of global presence on this team. And Bok has a Chronosphere available, so I'm looking forward to see some Chrono Sunstrike kills ASAP. It is nighttime as well, but nighttime should be disappearing in 30 seconds, so maybe they just wait for the next one. Uh, they have darkness, so they can make a play whenever they need. But I think they're doing the right play now, farming, because Fnatic has these very strong spells. They eat. Clutch have good heroes when they have items. Fnatic just have straight up good heroes when they have levels. And items only augment that. No. Nope. You Smoke. know, the more time they give their invoker to farm, the better. For this sure. is a late game hero. Dyer's top tower is about you know, he's, he's not a 20 minute hero anymore. I'm surprised that Bok didn't want to pick up the Arcanium and just with a shoulder cooldown, but okay, the smoke's gonna be broken. They know that he's in the trees. Ohio hugging his tier 1 tower. Gonna run using the Swarm. They use the Chrono as well. Everything's gonna connect. Fighting to the Sun Strike. Ice Blast is gonna land to Bok with the Fortune Send. Ohio, is he gonna die here? Bok, time walking away. Fire will use the Purifying Flame so he's gonna get the kill and Bok will TP out. Meanwhile, Seat Clutch Gamers are now gonna start pushing at the mid tier 1. Really good smoke, and I think the only reason they had the balls to make that play is DJ was showing on the creeper top. Oh dear, look at J.O. He's gonna go across the map and he's gonna find a poor pile I die. Feels bad, man. And okay, Envy, you know, with the did he used the Phantasm for that? Yeah, I think he did, and yep. that's the top tier too, taken out. So more gold going the way of Fnatic and. Yeah, they just need to keep getting their farm up, like... 
Solar Crest on Excalibur. He's actually going for... A, what's that, a pipe? Yeah, he's going for a pipe. He's taking a leaf out of Envy's book. Not the best pipe game, but Invoker does a lot of damage. So. X, Lincoln's coming up into Armel. Very good Lincoln's game, so can't blame him. I also like the fact he uh, took the 30 XP game. Most people either skip the talents or get the second forge for farm speed. But if he starts eating tombs and gets towards uh, the tornado cooldown, the hero gets a lot better at that point. And then you can do like multiple combos in the fight with your tornado. Like tornado EMP Ice Wall, tornado Cold Snap Meteor, that kind of stuff. Deafening Blast wherever you want. I mean, you could consider taking the AoE this game because of the CK. We're still a little far away, so talking about it's not the most relevant thing, but there's not much happening right now. Yep. Like just normal Dota 2 things, teams trying to push in lanes, see who shows, make plays. CG have 5 heroes right now, so they might um, make Fnatic pay if they make a play here. But they have no Chrono, so it's going to be really, really difficult. Uh, that, that's a good ward. That's going to give a lot of information this game. So I now it's time for Fnatic to do split push things. Unfortunately, it's AA bottom, so he can't really go like this. He can, but really, really, the really slowly. So Clutch Gamers, they won that tier 1 tower. Oh, there's actually a blink on Venom. First item. So he wants to yellow bomb. Also helps him split the map a lot, you know. You can get into a much better spot. And Clutch get this tower for free. Envy is coming up with the Phantasm, but it looks like they can just disengage. DJ couldn't get the flank. Meanwhile, Boombacks solo killing Pylai die. Not an easy game for an Ancient Apparition at all. Nope. Rough game, and Armel just goes back to farming. I mean, Lincoln Sphere, he's gonna get it on good timing. He is top of the net worth. Basically, a farm race between Armel and Excalibur. Kind of, but it, Visage does a lot less with the farm than Invoker does 20 minutes from now, 15 minutes from now. Considering that Visage has had minimal impact, you know, he's taken two towers, been involved in four kills. All four kills, admittedly. Oh, so he can't no. say too much for his anti uh, participation. And they go straight for Roshan with the. Is that Solar Chris? Wow, okay. Yeah. Ice Blast coming Pick in. Up. It's gonna land to two, bro. Epi, bro. But Armel falls promise up, another Poison Nova, whereas the Chronosphere is going to land to one, it's going to be Excalibur fighting to the Sunstrike, Meteor as well to follow up, but he has the pipe, so he's going to be really, really tanky, Deafening Blast as well, and Excalibur is going to oh go no. down, Box taking a lot of damage, he's going to time walk most of it away, or high cold snap onto him, and he should be dead here, so two heroes down, and they get the Aegis, and they will get the, both the Familiars as well. Alright, so... Poor Fnatic, man. They're just like that half a second too slow on their jump. It's really hard to contest a Roshan that dies in 5 seconds. E Especially when, like, how EE plays, like, he hates being inefficient. It's one of, like, the things I think loses him a lot of games. But, y you can't just sit around the Rosh pit with 5 heroes. You're gonna lose the game if you do that. But they, they give up a lot to try and contest it as well in the end. Uh, and now you can start seeing Clutch get to a point where they feel really comfortable in the game. And this Invoker pick starting to get bigger and bigger. 11,000 net worth. He's definitely pulled ahead because of the, you know, the wing of the team fight, Aegis, tier 2 tower. This Visage is falling further and further away behind. Even with the eggs, the I'm not sure if it's going to be a game changing item to the point where it's game winning. And Buck, well, 40 seconds to his next chrono. Diffusal on the way, this guy's fat. I think I'd almost rather see Vistage get like... Damage items. Obviously X gives you another bird which gives you damage and it gives you some stats at the same point. Uh, I, I don't know. 
I'm not a Visage player. I don't. I, I just feel like the pipe isn't really doing anything for them. They're not able to group up. They're not able to push. So this item is a good chunk of gold in the early game. Like it's it's a thousand gold short of an axe. And would you rather have an axe over the pipe now? I think, yeah, you would. There was obviously some kind of idea. Maybe Envy told him to buy a pipe. I don't know. Maybe one day he's like, all right, um, you know, you're playing a Sven. He's like, guys, trust me. Sven pipe is the new way to go. Yeah, BKB is a bad item. Just buy a pipe instead. Or well, when he realizes that... I think that Hood is an amazing item. It like, is. Hood is... So good, but upgrading it to the full pipe in this case, it's only Invoker really that does magic damage. A bit from Oracle, but he's more likely casting his spells to save his team if you're in a good position in the game. He's only allowed to use them offensively because they're ahead. So it's just Invoker that you're buying this pipe for. If it was on the other side and CG bought a pipe, I'd be like, yeah, that's a great pickup, you know, but. Uh, I just struggle to see them having the impact right now. Because CK is... He, he needs a bit of time to come online. And Visage is not a core that continues to scale like upwards throughout the entire game. He has these really strong peaks. Like when, when he gets his Solar Crest, level 12, huge peak. Gets his Axe, next peak. Gets level 15, kind of. After that, it, it's all kind of slowly downhill the more the rest of the opposing team get armor items, get kiting items. And here oh. we see another smoke. Mm -hmm. And they want to use the Chrono. Free Venno kill if uh, he doesn't blink out the Chrono. So you just hit him first. And nice and easy stuff. Won't even, even need a TP in him. The Sunstrike kill. Oof. Oof. Down he goes. He cancels his TP though. Yeah, he realized he didn't need to be there. It's like, better. And now he's just under 1800, uh, 800 away from his Lincolns. So, he's gonna get harder and harder to catch. Because Fennec's real jump is a Sand King. So he's gonna have to blink in for staff and then stun. Which gives Invoker time to react. Illusion. Same thing for the Weaver. And I wouldn't be surprised if Void gets one, but the likelihood is he gets damage items. Diffusal, BKB, kind of similar to the Void of last game. Or was it the previous game? I'm losing my mind. I don't know. One of the two. Chill dude, chill dude. Okay, so 16 to 4, 6,000 gold lead for clutch gamers. How do they seal this game? I think continue doing what they're doing is the game winning play right now. They just lost their Aegis, they weren't able to make a play with it, which is fine. They bought plenty of time to farm. If they feel like they can start taking fights by getting a tier 2, it's a bit of a weird way to play where you play aggressive after the Aegis, but they do have their double Lincolns now. Invoker's got his maxed uh, W and E, so damage output is as high as it's gonna get. From his spells at least. Top tower is on the rock. Maybe they just feel like Fnatic has uh, no chance of fighting them right now, so they can just cl claim this tower for free, which is a really good read on the map. They're trying to bring down Radiant's top tower. And they're not giving Radiant's anything up. Like, this Void isn't making a play and dying meanwhile, Radiant's so... Scanning for enemies. He might even get a catch if he sees the Sand King. Oh, popping the dust, the box, yes. on the hunt. Nice idea. Yeah, so Fnatic managed to uh, push out the lanes, but they don't get anything as a trade. They're just slowly falling, slow, uh, slowly falling further and further behind. And Oracle has a gem queued up, so that's going to be about the same time. Nightstalker finishes Zags, and then yeah, I enjoy your initiations as a Sand King with next to no vision. Uh, and this is why this hero is first pick, first ban. Puts a lot of pressure in the lanes, very, very strong. 
early game and then once you get the sags it makes the game so easy to execute All right, so Clutch Gamers, they are looking to try and seal this game out, but they're taking things very patiently. One minute before the Roshan spawns. Were you expecting this game to suddenly enter this very, very passive farming phase, PQ? Like, what What are the big items, like, you know, you want on the Void next? He said he's going BKB. Would you not want to Blink Dagger this game? I don't think he needs it. It's kind of what the Shadow Blade's for, but... If they're in a position where they're pushing, I think he's the counter initiator which you can generally get away with just time walking. And I'm looking yeah, at Envy. Fnatic are going to come to you at some point. Uh, yeah, Envy has a BKB, but has he had any impact this game? Not really. It, it's a good CK game from the aspect that they don't have a lot of damage to kill your illusions, but their lanes just never set them up for anything to happen. It kind of feels like the Benno's a dead weight hero. He's just pushing lanes. And this hero is, you know, he even went cast range over health. So he's not looking to be tanky or anything else. You know, he just wants maximum blink range, maximum ward range. So he can split push. And he's nearly got an Ax. And he is going, yeah, he is very close to the Ax. So suicide bombing sure, coming man. every single time. Oracle's pretty good at dealing with Venno, you know. He has to get like a lot of heroes. And Void can backtrack some of the damage, Weaver can time lapse it. If they're pushing, Invoker probably has an Aegis or Cheese. And just inbuilt Quas is normally good enough to keep him alive. If he's not getting focused and it's just like the Venno dots. Mm hmm. Oh, we're gonna see the Chrono here. It's gonna be used onto Ohio. Into the Sunstrike. Ooh. Toasted. Looking for more. Reality Rift. Well, Ice Blast is going to be off the mark. Looks like Bok is dead. Yep, he's going to get beaten up by Eternal Envy. And Armel in some serious trouble. Okay, just kidding. Maybe not. But now laying out the Forge Spirits. Do they actually want to try and fight here? They need to try and disengage. DJ coming in the Burst Strike Initiation. And they fight. Reality Rift. Fly Solo is. False promise that he's going to try and kill himself. But Armel going straight for DJ. Cold Snap, he's going to get the kill. Can he kill Eternal Envy? Reality Rift. Tornado up. And okay, down goes Fly Solo. Envy, is there any way to cancel? Do it before snap? Jo actually destroying the back lines. Pylai, die, and Excalibur. Four for two trade. What is happening? That was very, very messy. You could see Fnatic kind of had an idea something would happen. So they end up trading the Venom for the Void, which is a good trade for Fnatic, but. Then they get really drawn, like Envy goes this way to help DJ, and then I didn't see what was happening on the back line, but I'm guessing from you saying Weaver killed all of them, Weaver killed all of them, and they can't afford to split like that, because they don't have the strength in their heroes, and the more chaotic the fight is, the better Clutch's heroes are. Invoker and Weaver thrive on having the fights get drawn out so they can cast their spells multiple times and not get focused, and deal with one or two heroes at a time. And Invoker's about to hit 25 in a minute, maybe two minutes, depending how many creeps he hits. And if the book is on the way to him, it is not. They have one in stock, I wish I could see, but you know. Observer UI is not as good anymore. But I, I think it, whatever 25 talent he takes, it's going to have an impact in the fights. For the Invoker, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be, but it's gonna be really very really tough. I would prefer def the AOE deafening blast this game, purely because against Fnatic you're gonna need it against the CK. I mean, I, I can see the value see, of deafening. I think the other way. Uh, I really think the other way because you get like multiple tornadoes in the fight, so you can like initiate with the tornado, mm -hmm. and then when Envy goes in with his illusions, you you have the second tornado up, and you can use the blasters like. Uh, personally, I just think Tornado gives you more play in the game. I'm not an Invoker player, so if anyone tells me otherwise, I'll accept it. But being able to do like the Ice Wall EMP combos on top of them in, I don't know, like 10, 12 seconds, whatever it is with an Octarine Core, you can get, you know, your Meteor combos, your Death and Blast, Sunstrike, all that crap. It just lets the hero play more, and it pushes the waves better. You know, tornado and... 
one Forge Spirit kills mm -hmm. the wave. Oh, immediate blink out reaction from DJ. Tornado flying up into the air, Poison Nova oh, onto the three. But the Chrono in the back will go into Excalibur, Ice Blast coming into Bok. And they want to try and fight here, can he kill Ohio? Yes, they will. Media combo gonna land into Visage. But well, Excalibur is super, the epicenter is gonna be completely wasted. Jared just gonna time lapse away. DJ spiffs the epicenter. And Eternal Envy will demolish Fire Solo on the back. But looks like Boombax here is on the run. Those triple guardian familiar is doing so much damage. And Excalibur will take care of Boombax basically. And they will just shrine up. So two for one trade. That was very awkward. They lost their gem as well, right? Yeah, TJ has it now, so. Good fight to the EMP, damage. they want to try and fight into the ice wall. Alright, so no mana for DJ. Do they actually want to try and fight here? No, no RML does want to take the risk. Full I mean, snap, can they kill Envy? Yeah. Envy popping the BKB and the Phantasm Illusions. Reality Rift with the Chaos Ball. Lincoln is broken. Invoker gets a static shield. I think that was the first time where Clux used a Chrono on a hero and this is came out of it with full health. So the pipe definitely worked out in that situation. Maybe just a bit of bad shot calling from CG. Because in previous fights they've always been able to get something with a Chrono. That's probably why Fnatic were able to at least get a favorable trade. The question is how many times can uh, they do that where they make the Visage tank the spells. Because Clutch aren't stupid, you know? If something doesn't work in one fight, they're going to amend it in the next fight. Or at least you hope so. So I don't think Fnatic can rely on that. And if that Chrono goes on to Envy without a BKB or catches maybe Sand King before he gets his spells off, the fight looks different. Alright, so Clutch. You know, despite this advantage, I was kind of see hoping to see that. What, that one big team fight with a chrono into like a good media combo but in this case now okay, clutch gamers they want to do the roshan and this is where the rest of fanatic come to the scene in the pit they want to fight oh snap you took Ice Blast coming in down, okay so here comes ohio three men poison nova turn it up into the air envy popping the bkb chrono catching two but where's the follow-up okay armel he they needs need to, to run. run epicenter coming in right now i heard an epi oh silent stop it's going to be cancelled boom back to the place but Faceless Void might actually be dying here. Reality Riff, Armel in some serious trouble. Turn the EMP, gonna land to Internal Envy. Ohio will get the kill. So it's gonna be two heroes down inside of Clutch Gamers looking for the Sunstrike. Bang! Envy is gonna die to fly solo. Armel still has the yeah, Deafening Glass. But it's a 2 for 1 trade. Envy dies, but still, you know, you do get two very big they kills. They can get Rush. Yeah, that, that's definitely worth it for them. They managed to force out. Tornado and Chrono and still keep the other team on a defensive. And with Envy being dead, only reasonable hero to give the Aegis to is uh, Visage. Who, once he pops his Midas, pretty much has his Shiva completed, so he's going to get even more tanky. Kind of surprised he didn't go AC just for the offensive potential, but Shiva's is a lot more defensive. And the vision might be relevant if uh, people start going into trees and the game gets a bit more split. Wait, who went for the Shivas? Visage. Oh, okay. Mm, oh yeah, you're right, you're right. But yeah, I can I can see and why. Weaver also normally has BKB. Which will be a fight to finding item. Like, he might not have to run away when he gets poison overbombed anymore. Which is actually doing a lot. Like, that's... Uh, fight, it hit three core heroes. Previous fight, it hit all five. You know, it's doing a lot of damage. Sustains good remains. Probably not the most fun to play, but you know, this isn't a game for fun. This is a game for winning. It is, and both these teams, this whoever wins this, will make it to the final of the ESL Handbook C qualifier, which we will be casting tomorrow in the best of five. This is only the first best of three today, guys, and it's you can really feel how intense it is in you know, both teams. This can go anywhere. This is okay. Um, we always talk about how unpredictable Eternal Envy can get in those high risk, high reward, late game scenarios. Is this one of those games? Is this one of those games where his high risk, high reward calls can pay off here? Yes, I, I think he's going to need some kind of play. Because right now the game looks very structured, right? Mm -hmm. 
the, they they won the last fight. They got their ages, but is it enough? Especially when uh, oh, they Ohio found Ohio. Kid. He's gonna die here. It, it, it still feels like Clutch has the ultimate control of the game, which is where Fnatic needs to throw a wrench into it and find a way to make the game theirs. Personally, I don't see it, and I have all the vision in the game. They don't. So if they see it, that they have to find a play and go with it. Because this is the kind of game I think Invoker thrives in. So does Weaver, so does Void. CK and Visage, I don't think this is their game, you know? They're doing a really good job to keep up on oh, their Oh, is all completely missed. Tornado Flying is also going to miss, so the spells are just not landing at all. Very, very awkward exchange. The clutch gamers, they want to go back shot. in. Do they have a chrono? Bok, he's lurking. Bok. This is just managed to get the tier 2 bottom, meanwhile. He's threatening tier 3 as well with his experts, so... CG back off right now, I imagine. Yeah, they are. You might see a summon. Tornado, Ice Wall, yeah. He gets one of them. That's still a lot of gold. 100 yeah, gold it's like for 150, one. right? 100 to 150? 100. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know, man. I haven't played against Vistage in a while. And when I do, I don't get the chance to kill the birds. Alright, Bok. He's chrono looking for Envy. envy. Does he think by using the Chrono here? Yes, he does. Looking for the Sun Strike as well. And it looks like this will be the death of Eternal Envy. J.O. on a Beyond God like streak. They're going to keep That's going for more. Up. Using the Fusal Blade. They want to go straight into the Venom Enter. And I think Ohio should be dead right here. Yes, he will. So J.O. Also has yep, they are looking for more Excalibur. Alright, they have found the Visage Core. Can they kill him off here? They found two DJ as well. And they're going to just right click Excalibur down. Now the BKB is going to... Oh, the Buyback is going to come out. Bok, time walks a lot of that damage out. But the Eternal Envy buyback has been baited out. And of course, Boombax. Hello, Tornado coming in. Just at the tip. DJ is looking for blood. He wants to find a burrow. Looking for the fall, but no. The Ice Blast is going to the wrong game. To the top. I'm not sure who's there. Pretty good sacrifice from the Night Stalker. You know, they'll take that. Two core kills, one buyback from the most important hero. The Mm -hmm. Oh, DJ, cap. DJ, DJ, they put the sentry down, but here comes Envy, Reality Rift, he's going straight for Fly Solo, popping the BKB, oh no, if he no. dies here, Envy, no. not like this, popping the cheese, okay, that was a really, really close call, he has to be very, very careful, Tornado flying up now into the epicenter, it's going to be completely split, EMP, and no mana, Internal Envy, Ice Ball trapping everyone, Media Combo landing, and Internal Envy might actually be dying here, he will die, and there'll be 90 seconds without this Chaos Knight, Excalibur, Against the world, he's gonna die to Jo. Aegis is gonna pop. That's no bird. No resummons. I, I think it's over. Fnatic. So they might strike. not. Okay, they take care of the Sand King as well. But all right, Excalibur gonna do whatever he can. Ck buys back. What else now? Tornado should be finishing him off. And Ohio will die here to Jo one more as well. Excalibur does actually get they the buck kill. Wow. Yeah, the, they aren't respecting how tanky this hero is, but he does die in the end. Mm -hmm. and Void has no buyback, but end of the day, that's an incredibly favorable trade. Invoker pretty much solo winning the fight. If Envy would have killed the Oracle before the False Promise came off, it might have looked a bit different, but Void got one or two bashes. Mm -hmm. But I think the same problem would have still happened. Envy popped his BKB, and then Invoker did his thing. And CK needs a very important kill for the start of the fight to go well. It kind of has to be Invoker, I feel like. Or Void. Because otherwise, you see what happens. Tornado, Ice Wall, EMP. CK is useless, and then the damage just comes through. DJ can't do anything here. False Promise onto an Invoker, keeping him alive. He's going to be okay. The top lane is pushing in. Look at that. Tier 2 Tower, Jail, and TP back. This is where they need to fight. Ohio's coming in as well. They want to try and fight here. They're probably getting the kill and the poison over. No hesitation. Armel, right, Tornado, EMP. Onto two heroes. Alright. Both the bugs. Deafening Blast pushing them both back. And they cannot catch Armel. Will Armel die here? Ultimate. Yes. Ohio getting the kill. A thousand gold flying to Ohio. Ah, Split Pressure's doing it. And they, they can force a buyback here. I guess we spoke too soon. Envy's gonna get the DD rune here as well if they scout it. Oh, never mind. They changed. 
seconds at the time. Feels bad, man. Still good though. With his blink, he can maybe get a good initiation. At the very least, they're going to get a tier 2 here. And then an invoker buyback if he feels attack. comfortable. They have the chrono, so a very easy setup for his buyback to mean a kill or multiples. Who is he going to kill? Oh, they know they where he is. Envy, they use the chrono. Oh, they caught three of the familiars as well. The Sunstrike. Okay, Envy. Popping the BKB and the Phantasm. Tornado flying up the bash. Oh dear, Jay is on the hunt for Eternal Envy. He wants that CK. Epicenter coming in, the burst strike firing on landing to two heroes. Jayo, alright, they take care of the Oracle. But down goes Envy in the backline, getting sniped off by Boombax. And with the Kofi probably looks like Boombax is gonna die here. Chain stuns, and the Shiva's got Excalibur getting a kill. This hero is so tanky. And now Boombax buys out Armel, EMP stealing a ton of mana. Wait, he's gonna keep right clicking, but he actually blinks forward. So assumption to break the Lincolns, they will find Bok. Now they have to try and get any kills here. Bok, deafening blast, landing into two. This is so awkward. Jail back into the fight. He wants to come back in for Visage. Candy kill the Visage. Media combo is actually gonna completely miss. EU media. Lol. And Excalibur, well. What do you mean, dude? Uh, I'm just kidding, dude. Relax. And okay, SEA looks like Excalibur media. will die. SEA media? Yeah, he's an SEA player. What the hell are you on about? He's playing like a boss, but you know, he missed his media so long. Oh, dude, I'm getting. I, I don't even know what I'm doing at this point, man. There's just so many spells being thrown around. And not to the players at this point, I think. It's getting a bit chaotic for everyone. It is, but you know, whenever it's it, chaotic... He's playing like a boss. He really, really is. Like, he's ranging every spell. Like, almost every time he gets in a position that someone can capitalize on, like, an overplay, he dodges. You know? He has played this game about as well as you could expect. I got confused at one point. I think I, I was speaking too fast. I got confused. I, I thought Excalibur was an invoker at some point. <sighs> If only the tables have turned. But okay, but you know, just as I was saying, like this game is so chaotic that this is basically the best time for Eternal Envy to you know thrive. It's called Eternal Envy time. Because this part of the game is so unpredictable. Yeah, full retard time. Well look at the they look at the familiars, you know they're gonna start and they're gonna start riding out the top lane. I kind of wish the they would Radiant just let the familiars do their thing and then they take the interesting cheese. They're doing that with the Weaver anyway. And Invoke is quickly coming back. But they're giving time for the Visage to come back. No, no, no. Or did they just smoke? Oh, th this is smart. This is really, really smart. They're baiting the Roche play. Ice Blast goes out and. Uh, they could execute it slightly better, but the idea to like get the smoke and wrap around. Good. <laughs> But it doesn't work out, so they end up just blowing the smoke for no real reason. He just goes to invoke it because he has no buyback. She's to the Weaver, I imagine. When uh, the Invoker wants to share it. Oh, are they gonna get the tier 3 yeah. tower? Uh, yeah, he probably does. Tier 3 tower, deafening blast. Oh, no, this... It's about 4 HP. Yeah, I mean. You can deny it, but it doesn't really matter because this is just sends his birds there once, kills it. You you at least make him send his birds there. Denying it doesn't really have a point this game. You just open the shrines up for no real reason. Yeah. Oh, I want to see if uh, Weaver opts to buy his full item, whether it's MKB, whether it's uh, Daedalus, whether it's Rapier. I don't know. Man up. No pussy. Let's go. No, he, he wants his buyback. Daedalus is going to be the player here. Yeah, there's no real reason to get a MKB. Except for the Visage. Giving Solar Crust. But he I don't think Visage is the hero he wants to be focusing. He wants, like... Namely the CK. Or any of the supports that haven't cast their spells yet. Like, if you can get Sand King before he stuns. If you can get Venno before he ulties. But those generally rely on a hero being chronoed. Yeah, and he does buy the Daedalus now, so when the chicken goes back to base. This is a it's a small misplay, but you know. This ward coming out now could have been a Daedalus as well. And it would make them a lot stronger for this push. Now they're probably gonna opt to wait a bit. And that means no DD rune hits on towers. Unless they just go anyway, you know? But I don't like the idea of having a free kick old item not in use. Oh, they Let's found a ton of Envy into the cold snap! And he looks like Envy's dead! 
No buyback for 81 seconds and they may have just done it. You said they needed to isolate Envy. Well, they've done it with all the Chrono and all the spells being thrown. Now Brown Strike coming in and the Poison Nova as well. Eternity just got buyback. Ice Blast will actually kill out Jayo. Big kill. 1100 gold flying their way. And now they're going for the Boombacks as well. They will take care of Boombacks. Jabate it. Straight mid, straight mid. That would have been fine if the Oracle was just there to deal with the Hex, but he wasn't. And I guarantee you, MB said something like, I, I have buyback in like 15 seconds, they're gonna jump me like idiots. Go, 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 I'll bait, I'll bait. And then he buys back and it works out. But the question is, can they force Weaver to buy out? Because if, if they make that play, where MB does the buyback, they need to get something off of it. Otherwise, the game just goes back to the same situation where CG only have one hero they need to worry about killing. And this is a 15k net worth CK, who has less than his Sand King, less than his Venom. And he took the GPM talent as well. Alright, so to get the tier 3 tower, shrines are open. This is looking... What is happening, Envy? Okay. We get to the back line, demolishes Fly Solo! An immediate buybacks out from J.O. and Fly Solo. And okay, they take the melee barracks already. Looking for the Sun Strike. They need to kill Eternal Envy. They know he has no buyback. And Eternal Envy can um, let toggle his way through this. No, he cannot. Armel's damage is just way too high. Excalibur. Meanwhile, what uh, the is doing now looking for the epicenter being channeled out of the back line. Nice borrow strike and of course fighting under the shrine though, not the best idea. And actually Bok is gonna time walk out of all of this. Armel throwing out the media, he's only taking care of the illusions. Excalibur still doing way too much, he's just so tanky, but he will finally die to the weaver. No buyback either. He has it in 30. 20 actually. But yeah, MV He tried. That's definitely the play the other team would not expect. The no buyback CK to jump into your base and pop his BKB and kill a support. I mean, he had to make a play. And that's the play he saw. That's the play he was given by the other team. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for Fnatic fans. And now they have 50 seconds where Chrono is available. They have every single spell they need, all the BKBs are just ticking around, and MB is dead for 40. They can hold, I think they can hold, because this is not over yet. With Ice Blast, and okay now the Chrono comes out, it's only catching onto the Visage. Sunstrike, Visage is really tanky, Deafening Blast, he's actually really really tanky, he's not just dead. Bok may actually end up paying for his life by going for the Chrono. Armel, they actually have to get out without popping the Hex. Fortune's not going to connect. Ohio, going to catch him. They need to kill him off, but they're popping the False Promise. Gem is on the floor, and they want to chase after Clutch Gamers. Like I said, they, they can hold. This game is not yet over. Fnatic on the hunt, looking for another bar strike. Going to get caught by the Tornado, and they actually buy enough time. Wow, this is this game, PQ. This I don't know, game. Man. I they keep getting baited by trying to go on the Visage Even though they know he has no buyback This hero is still a, a monster tank His effective HP is way more than 3k and is under They used BKBs, they used combos Still can't kill him I think if they just play like the Siege game And don't get jabated into like A multiple hero poison over And a multiple sand king Two hero, three hero stuns they can see that, but instead they go really deep. They don't lose that much, admittedly. You know, it's just an oracle. They still have all their cores. They all still have buybacks, I believe. Yeah, Invoker has his. Weaver doesn't though. Oh, they're gonna sneak in. This is a very s sneaky smoke maneuver. They put a ward down. And the ward. Going with the boss back into the ice blast. Immediately gonna take care of Bok. They know that Bok is gonna die. They have no chrono. He will be forced to buy back. Media combo landing to the DJ. Definitely Bash gonna push all the illusions back. It's gonna be popping the BKB. And now this is where they wanna try and turn into Excalibur. Maybe the world of is gonna die, I think. But they're gonna take out the range racks. Chasing after Ohio. Ohio will be dead. He has buyback off. Now here comes the epicenter. Can they kill Armel? He is dead. And then they may actually be able to force the buyback out. Jay already popped his BKB. Alright, now they're gonna turn and they're probably gonna get DJ from this, even using the Chronosphere just to secure themselves this kill. Venno, Invoker, everyone buys back. They wanna try and fight here. DJ also buys back. This is where they go they all the in. Everything is on the line and no one's backing down. Excalibur getting caught by the Tornado EMP. They wanna try and fight He's here. Dead. Armel, okay, you could catch him out here. Bok, do they have what it takes? Excalibur, if he dies here, it could be over. Two minutes without the Visage. 
And they want to keep on going. Well, they lose a full lane of barracks, but then again, a melee barracks was already down. And I think they still have the heroes to basically cope with this. Like, even if they lose one lane of barracks, by then the Visage sh should be up. Yeah, they can lose two lanes. Problem is... I don't think it's enough for them to end the game. And Jemmy's right on now. the floor. The, they still have a cheese on Weevil, which is going to help a lot. And the scary thing is because, you know, you have the, the three times play guard talent now in Ohio. The middle lane is very hard to push in. Clutch gamers cannot close out this game. Net worth advantage is basically useless at this point. And this is where... Uh, they do get the birds. Okay. Uh, well, one bird. He's probably going to get at least another one. So he will get them both. They, they get resummoned when he's up, but that's 60 seconds without any split pressure, and now he can TP mid. And they know there's no Visage buyback. They should also know that MV has no buyback. Still two minutes. So if they see him with a chrono in 20 seconds, they can go. This is not the same situation where they have this super tanky hero that they might get faded to go on. They can siege now. And if anyone does show, they can kill them. Okay, yeah, we'll get no the tier 3 tower. Mechanism. So Bok waiting patiently at the back line. They're gonna try to slowly siege, taking at least at the range racks, but Jo can't do it. Another tornado coming out. Yeah, he's playing really scared. They are playing very scared. They have to be. I mean, Excalibur's up in 10 seconds. So they will back out, and bottom lane is pushing in after all. This is just late game Dota, you know? If this is like some scrim or something, they probably push it a bit more, but they know something's on the line. So they don't want to take the risk. And, you know, the gold lead is still in their favor, but... In this game now, it becomes less and less about gold and more about initiation and buybacks. If they can find the hero without buyback and close out the game that way, that's how they win. If they go for some yellow jump and they get the hero who does have buyback instead of the hero that doesn't, then that could be game losing, you know? And yep. so far, no one has it. Right now. Except Night Stalker, who's pretty inconsequential. If he loses uh, his gem, it's not really that relevant. He's just a utility hero at this point. Clutch gamers, they will go for their own smoke if they can find the picks. This could be the game. This is very, very intense between both teams. They understand the importance of winning this game. Can they get the sync? Ooh, this is crazy. Looks like they will find DJ. The Colonel's gonna be completely missed on Bok. Oh, it's a shitstorm. And now they have to get out because right now Fnatic, they are on the hunt. They know that there's no Chrono. Tornado flies out. So short cooldown spell, but Clutch Gamers, they have to get out. Yeah. Now they can see Roche. And Roche is up in 10 seconds. Uh, I don't know, man. That's that's so close. You, you definitely go for that play. You can't blame him. But, you know, the the pressure is definitely mounting. You can see it in how they move and how they cast the spells. Whoa, this is crazy. And all right, so now that the Roshan should probably be going to Fnatic, or oh, they're baiting things out there. They have the Phantasm Illusion's gonna try and scout. Maybe get the Illusion to this play around with Armel and Tornado flying into the pit. And Boombax. Now he will use the Darkness, but here comes the Chrono from Bok. That was a refresher. refresher. Into the Meteor combo, can they kill Ohio? Ohio is dead, two minutes without Ohio. But the epicenter at the backline, Armel using the False no Promise of doing with the BKB. They wanna try and chase him down. But two heroes already dead on the side of Fnatic. It'll be a two for two trade as well. And okay, so eternal envy, he goes ham. He destroys Boombax. And J.O., what does he do? Gem is on the floor. And Fnatic will go back and the pit. They still have Excalibur up. Now the buyback up from Boombacks, they really want to get this Roshan. Armel, he needs to buy time, he needs to start throwing out Tornado combos. Yep, Tornado combo flying into the EMP as well. With the Ice Wall, it's messing around. Alright. What can he do? The Hex up onto Jo. Jo in some series of Deafening Blast will stall for a bit of time and the time lapse away from Jo. This is the biggest fight around the Roche pit ever. The importance of this, I cannot even ex emphasize how much Excalibur will finally die. 100 seconds without Excalibur. Eternal Envy against the wall with the soundtrack. This should be it. Eternal Envy is dead, but he has buyback. He may be forced to buy back over here. DJ, what does he do? Use that up into the air. 
and the creepers are banging into the tier fours, but it doesn't even matter. It's of no importance at all. All right, so Invoker's gonna go back, clear out this wave that's hitting the tier fours, pretty big wave, and then he has to be a two. Does anyone have buyback soon? So Aegis on one of them, she's towards the other, I imagine. Maybe the Invoker doesn't even want to hold a cheese because he has a BKB swap him. So Weaver can have both. And I, I think the Void sold something, I'm really not sure, but he got money for Refresher and that definitely caught Fnatic off guard. It wasn't the best chrono, but they managed to start the fight and Envy. that's all that they needed in the end. He buys back, but this will be a lane of yep, barracks no at team. least. There should be two lanes of barracks, maybe even the Megas. They probably think Mystic has buyback. He actually has it in like 40 gold, because the cooldown is available, he just didn't have money. So they're taking the super safe route here. Going prone is like the ballsy way, you know? Mm -hmm. But they can effectively get two racks for free. The Megas probably slightly more contested. Now, Envy has Phantasm, but does he find the hero he wants to jump with her? The Weaver with a heart is not the hero. Also, you know, the Aegis and Cheese. And these are uh, birds that aren't up for another 20 seconds. So if you kill them, you've got a small right, Breaking the Lincolns, J.O. popping the BKB. He wants this melee barracks. Fortification will be used. And okay, they actually catch him. Can they catch him? Okay, no, they should Kuchi speed way too fast. So hurry the back line, however. Ice Blast coming in. Will he land on J.O.? That's a nice chrono it's catching. Excalibur is going to keep him there. But J.O. is dead. Aegis is down. And now Tornado EMP again, looking for the media combos. Bang! Meatball, but Eternal Envy popping the BKB. Can he get any kills here? Unfortunately not. And middle lane is pushing in. Can he kill Boombacks? Bok has the second every Chrono. He's gonna get hexed up! Hex. And oh! No Void! No buyback. They have to go. No buyback on Void. No buyback on Boombacks. Fnatic, they have to push for the advantage right now. But immediately they disengage. Clutch gamers, they cannot afford to lose Void anyone else. In, in 170, and he has the cooldown up. So, Fnatic, if they're tracking oh, cooldowns right. to the second, it'll be close. Oh, Fnatic, they are going to charge down the middle lane right now. They need to push. Oh, they're going for the trade. And they're just going to go tier for them. I yeah, think. I think I think they can. I think they're I think I mean, going to try and sneak this out. But they're picking up. Yep, they know that they're going to try and break the backdoor protection. They have the lacrity. Oh, this is sneaky. This is very sneaky. There is no fortification, but this is where they go all in. They're going all in. This is the all in player right here. They're going for the tier fours. They need to go back. They just need to defend this like one push and then they get control on the game. Okay, Void, Void bought back. back. One corner. Only one. Ohio. Yeah, He's going to try and buy time with the poison Nova. Eternal Envy, Collins at the Chrono, he's trying to get into the tier 4s but he can't! Oh, okay, now here comes the Epicenter, gonna try to save some time, Eternal Envy! Okay, he's still really, really tanky on the front lines, however, he's not dying just yet, he's trying to right click the jail, but Jail's gonna take care of Eternal Envy! And that's 2 minutes without the CK! And okay, Armel and the BKB over the back. Jail gonna cut by the Burrow Strike, Tornado flying up, gonna take care of the Sanking. And this is where they need to kill all these heroes and they will be okay. But can Fnatic do it? Armel getting caught by Excalibur. Weaver will buy back. Excalibur will take care of Armel. Armel immediately buy back. But Excalibur, can he take care of the tier for the throne? It's taking damage, but they don't have the damage for this. Plague Wards, do whatever you can. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I think they have done it. Have they? No, they haven't. But they are definitely one step closer. I thought they ended this game at least 20 minutes ago, but Beast. I was wrong. So I'm not going to say shit until the throne is down now. But the Megas definitely create problems for Fnatic. Sand King can push the wave in. Benno can push the wave in quickly, but the other three heroes do suffer with their wave push. And Mega Creeps are going to be a problem for them. And Clutch now will probably feel like a huge sigh of relief, and they might play with a tiny bit more freedom as well. Even though they do have no buybacks on any hero. But they can almost make a mistake with at least one hero. Maybe two, and they can get away with it, I feel like. Probably not two cores, so. How but are you really going to play Roche against Megas, in 10 minutes. 
Roche is in 10 minutes, but how are you going to play into this? It's pretty Megas. easy when it's all like in your base. If you just set here, this you can defend them. It's doable, but it gives complete control of the map away. I mean, CK, he's probably going to get rid of this Echo Saber, right? Go into another item, or unless he gets rid of the Blink Battle Dagger Fury. instead. Battle Fury? Not Mjolnir? He needs to, uh, Mjolnir is like, it's too slow. Mjolnir is a better fighting item, but yeah, you need to be able to push waves. You, you do not win this game unless you can push waves. Ohio, what's this next I, item? I don't think. Oh, Shiva's gone. Do you not want to consider a Bloodthorn on on your Venno? You need, I feel like you need a bit more damage. Visage as well. Probably might consider getting rid of the Solar Crest. Go into his own vert. You know, like a hex. Okay, he already has the hex. Maybe a Refresher all? I, I don't even know. I'll take your tribute. I think Visage needs a right click item. Maybe Mjolnir himself. I think Venno needs an item that allows him to survive. Ghost Scepter's probably. Uh, I mean, Void still has Diffusal Charges, so not the best option. Yeah, they're actually able to get the waves out somewhat, which is nice. But they can't really make any plays, because it, it's just going to be too obvious. And I think Clutch, right now, is just taking their time. You know, the game is in their control at this point, so... You almost need to take a moment and just formulate an idea, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the past 15 minutes have been so chaotic, there hasn't really been much of a choice. It's been like, okay, we're going to contest Roche. How do we do that? As opposed to what do we do, you know? Now, the game is open again. So it's like, okay, what do we do with our space? How do we close this game out? And Void having the Refresher is one of the best ways to do it. They just need to find the fight. I mean, he's even keeping a Mango just to make sure that he has enough of the, the double... The double chronos. Yeah, he's done that every fight. Mm -hmm. But this every, ever so since he bought it. Is it worth it though? Like he so far the chronos we haven't seen like a huge five man or even three man chrono. It's always been a single target chrono every single time. He always seems to be isolated. He's gonna get one. He wants to isolate the visage. That seems to be the game plan. If he can get one hero plus for birds, I think it's good. Because his team doesn't need him to hit a big chrono, and I think that's why he's been going for these single or doubles. Because he can play with that freedom. He doesn't have the pressure of, okay, I'm going to sit back in the fight and do nothing for 5-10 seconds until they overcommit for a hero, and then I might get a 5-man chrono. Or my hero might die, because I'm not doing anything, you know? Uh, Weaver has a Moonshard as well now. Probably on Invoker's list soon. But they aren't getting that much money at this point. Their net worth really hasn't moved much. Fanatics has, but Clutch has kept pretty steady with the 30k lead. Uh, sorry, 30k on both the heroes. And I just feel like, you know, with the CK pick, this hero still has so much more room to grow in terms of items. He I mean, does. That's he the does. scary thing. Yeah, that's the, that's the extremely scary part. Like, you can, you know, if they just keep holding on for like, if, that, if the game smoking. drags on. Oh, they're also going to smoke, but where are they going to go? This is, this Without is a very better, scary smoke. He has BOT too. So he's defending. He's going to TP into like a bird or something. But they're contesting Rush. They they know it can be available. So they have to make a play. 20 seconds. Oh, DJ Sandstorm burst strike immediately. Buck looking for the chrono opening. Time dilation into DJ. They're going to use the chrono. They want to get this DJ down immediately for the manpower advantage. And they have the secondary chrono available as well if they need to use it. Immediate buyback from the Sand King. He popped his BKB on. Oh, he's going to come back in. But the chrono is only going to be used. Oh, it's actually onto Envy. The BKB. But he's still going to keep him alive. And down goes Buck. And now over in the back lane, the epicenter. And down goes Night Socket, deleted by the Phantasm Illusions. And over in the base, in the Radiant base, Excalibur, watch your base. And Boombacks will buy back from this. Ohio just trying to zone out Armel. Yeah, Void has no buyback for 130. Very, uh, very messy seconds. game. But what do they do? The tier 4s are taking a ton of damage from this Mega Creeps. CG just need to stall. That, that's their game plan. Fnatic, middle tower they, is they need the wave clearing heroes to go back and they need the Visage to go forward. I mean, what a game three, what a game three PQMC and I don't even think we're close to being done. 
DJ will be the one defending the base of the back. One more fight. I, I kind of feel like it's one more fight now. Look at the bar. It's an EMP. Oh dear, not like this. Yes. So. Then they might have to go through. Getting a bit of lag, but what's happening? Fly Solo getting caught out. Eternal Envy, can he? Oh no! Sick game though. It was a sick game. One hour and seven minutes. I'm so sorry, guys. At the end, my internet just chose to just fuck up at the end. I'm so sorry. I'm kind of, I'm kind of tilted from that. I'm, I'm really sorry about that, that you guys didn't get to see that amazing ending. I could feel it was going to be really, really intense. Not the way I wanted to end game three like that for you guys. But um, yeah, congratulations to Clutch Gamers. And they will proceed to the final of the ESL Hamburg C qualifier. Well, Fnatic, it was a really, really close call. Like, between the two teams... It was really hard to tell who was actually better. It was really intense. Like Excalibur, I've never seen a Visage call being played that late as well. That was really sick. And he was also playing from a deficit most of the game. Mm -hmm. And he found a way to be relevant. To be honest, I, I think Fnatic, their play matched up. But I'm not so sure about their drafts. I mean, if anything, we should also be commending J.O. I mean, J.O. has been under a bit of scrutiny for a while, but I think he's actually found his stride. I think he's improved again. I think he's found himself again. The Armel Invoker was, you know, nothing too spectacular. I would say he did decently as an Invoker, but the J.O. was the story, the highlight of the story for me this game, like, really on point. And... Yeah, I mean, there was any other final well words? He did. 22, 2, and 18. Look at his damage down. 58,000. Yeah. Personally, I think games like this always come down to the Invoker player. He had the most pressure on his shoulders by far from his team. And he carried it really well. Made very few mistakes. Whenever his team got caught, he made the correct decision of not going in to try and save them. You know, he just throws his tornado and pieces out. Good late game decision making. And I'm not going to say the better team won, but... Yeah, it, towards the end... I think that draft just pulled them for. It did, but Invoker late yeah. game, man. Can, can you imagine if the CK beast. actually had like ten minutes more of farm? I think that would have been. But he didn't. Yeah, but can you imagine if he, if he did, did? Yeah, that's the weakness of CK. Weak late, weak early game. If you can't like get kills. Maybe it wasn't even Fnatic's draft. More so as like their lanes. This game. I don't know, I feel like they gave themselves an uphill battle as soon as they lost uh, that rune fight. And then they stayed with the lane. And they gave this Void who kind of had no right of having a equal farm lane to have it. You know, if they just send the AA bottom, CK AA, destroy that hero. Because they can kill him very easily. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's interesting to see how like this playstyle of... Fnatic, the way they're drafting a bit differently now, where they just leave eternal like envy alone, and you just put, place more emphasis on the other lanes. It is it is really interesting to see like it's starting to shape up. I think these guys have more potential in future tournament qualifiers. And at the same time, we should also talk about Ohio and Buck. Like you know, that was uh, that was very good to see both these offlaners constantly on form. Like the void was so crucial this game in Ohio. That that poison over that eggs poison over blinken every single time on four heroes. That that was just crazy stuff from both of them. Like, both the pause threes, if I had to say, it was really hard to tell who he was even playing better than each the whole time. They were just constantly going with these great plays. I think in the end, though, you'd rather have a spell that locks heroes down than you would deal, I don't know, a quarter of their health. That's just the nature of Venno as an offlaner when you play him like this. No utility. If he had a Hex, maybe. But he went, like, Octarine and... BOT2. End of the day, though, it's all hindsight now. Like, when you're playing, that game is... It's impossible to think for more than a minute. You don't have time. Oh, well. And but now we have another series. Yeah, we do. I'm going to be sad. Like... I don't, I don't even know, man, but... Alright, yeah, well, guys, we will be heading to our next series, which we are already late, and we're going to have to head into the lobby. We'll see you guys for our next series... Well, um, okay, looks like we have to watch this next game through Dota TV. So, 